Hi, welcome to another Falcon 4 BMS tutorial. In this video we're going to be going over uh, proper configuration of controls, what controls are really important, what controls you need to know offhand. We're also going to be going over how to set up a data cartridge. And uh, the data cartridge is pretty much um, software that is loaded when you start up the game. And if you don't have a data cartridge set up, then every time you fly you're going to have blank MFDs and you're going to have to manually set up all your MFDs bullseye, uh, ECM programs, and all that. So we're going to fix that in this video. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to set up on the top right in the main menu. Uh, I'm just going to run through some basic settings here that you should probably have. Um, first things first is, is I would set everything to realistic. Of course you don't have to do that. It's pretty much up to your own discretion, but if you want to get the most out of the game, fly it realistically. Another like major thing that most people don't do is they don't turn on smart scaling. Okay, it's this box right here. You need to turn on smart scaling. It's an absolute necessity. Um, smart scaling will pretty much make vehicles appear larger than they would. Uh, it makes them appear larger, but it's not cheating really. It just sort of simulates the resolution of the human eye and what the human eye would be able to see in reality. So I'd highly recommend put, putting smart scaling on, otherwise you're going to have a really hard time uh, seeing objects on the ground. Another thing is, is radio calls use bullseye. That is, um, what that is referring to is when the AWACS or another aircraft gives a radio call, they will often, by default, they'll give a bearing and a range to the contact from you. But um, realistically, that's never done and you would use bullseye in almost all circumstances. So I'd check that on if you're, if you're comfortable using bullseye, but you should eventually turn it on even if you don't have it on now. Because every time someone hears a radio message, it's relative to them. So for instance, if you call a, an AWACS picture, the AWACS is gonna tell you something, you're gonna hear them say something differently to you than your wingman who's 10 miles behind you would hear if you don't use bullseye because your wingman or the other people that hear it they'll hear the bearing to whatever contact is being declared relative to their position so it's sort of it's like unrealistic and bullseye is much better because it's the same for everyone everyone's on the same page and um it is it is a little trickier to use if you don't know what a bullseye is in aviation but in the long run you should definitely turn that on and um, the other stuff here is pretty much for you know your own discretion so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to controllers and uh, this screen looks really intimidating but it's fairly simple you just click on the function that you want to change and then you press a key so I'm just going to run through the essentials that I have bound on my joystick. Um, you're pretty much going to want to bind these, or at least know the keys to them. So obviously the first thing I have, and all you have to do to really detect stuff on your joystick is just press the buttons, and they should be detected automatically. And don't be confused by the joystick buttons um, interface here. It only shows eight buttons, but it will fully detect all of them if, they're, if your computer detects them. So, let's go ahead and start um, just going through the buttons that you need. So, number one is going to be your fire button for the gun, okay? And we can see it's down here in weapon. It's right there. By default, it's forward slash. you got to have your fire, fire gun button. Another thing that you're going to want to have is um, a pickle button. And that's um, that space bar by default. You're gonna want to have pickle. It's also known as weapon pickle. Uh, the next thing you're gonna want, and by the way, if you don't know what pickle is, that is basically the consent to release button. So whenever you fire a bomb, whenever you fire a missile, you're gonna need to consent to release by either pressing pickle or holding down pickle. Okay. The next button that you're gonna want to bind is TMS up. Hold his TMS up, and what TMS up does is it will lock onto targets, and it also 
makes whatever soy you have active, um, it, it will basically activate whatever sensor you have active. So, for instance, if you're using a targeting pod and the targeting pod is the sensor of interest, if you press TMS up, it will put it into area mode. If you're on the FCR and you slew over to a radar contact and press TMS up, it will lock onto them. So the most important thing about TMS up is that it locks onto stuff. So make sure you have that bound. And also important is TMS down. HOTUS TMS down. And that does the opposite of TMS up. It just unlocks from whatever you have activated or selected. Another really cool button. These aren't essentials, but I would definitely put them on your stick if you have, you know, more than 11 or 12 buttons is TMS left and TMS right, okay? And what these what these uh, buttons do is that they'll switch to nearby air contacts within three miles of the of the original air contact that you have selected. So if you lock on to a bandit and he's flying in a group, or let's say he's in a four ship group and they're all within three miles, you can you don't have to slew around your radar and then lock onto them individually. If you wanted to, you could just press TMS right and TMS left. It'll switch between them. They're really useful and uh, they're not necessary but I would highly recommend having them. And all the HOTUS buttons are grouped under HOTUS. You just, and this is all alphabetical, so just scroll down to, uh, or I guess partially alphabetical. Or maybe not. Anyway, just scroll down to where it says HOTUS. It's a, it's a big section right here. Uh, and then HOTUS is like DMS, CMS, and TMS. Okay, so the next button that we're going to bind is we're going to bind uh, radar antenna tilt down and radar antenna tilt up. And what these buttons do is that it will change the altitude in which your radar is scanning. So you're going to be using this constantly. Look, you'll be using this on a constant basis. You know, your radar has a gimbal limit. It's basically a beam that comes up from the front of your aircraft, and you have to constantly be changing the parameters of that beam in order to illuminate targets. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to uh, bind is HOTUS DMS down. And what DMS down will do is it will change sensor of interest. So if you want to, you can only manipulate one sensor at a time, okay? If you want to change from one sensor to another, you have to press. You have to hold down DMS down. So let's say you have your ground-based radar, and you want to engage. Um, you want to use your targeting pod to guide, you know, a bomb in with laser guidance. You have to switch to the targeting pod from the FCR using DMS down. You also use it on things like the harm, and it also has a bunch of other functions that are rare but you'll still use them. For instance, if you want to just disable the HMCS system, which is a helmet mounted HUD, you all you have to do is hold down DMS down for a second or so and then it will just disappear. So it does a bunch of like miscellaneous features that are really useful. Okay, another button that I have on my stick is wheel brakes and the default key for that is K. You can put it on your stick or you can put it on your joystick or, or you can put it on your keyboard, but I would highly recommend having it on your stick and the reason for that is when you're landing you don't want to reach over your your joystick in order to hold down the brakes button you want to be able to do that hands-free and the way you're going to do that is with uh or not hands-free i mean you're going to want to do that with hands-on throttle and stick in other words hotis and um you're, the only way you're going to do that is if it's on your stick and nearby to where you're manipulating the pitch and roll of the aircraft um another button i have is cockpit drop chaff, okay? There's multiple, um, there's multiple, like, there's drop flare, drop chaff flare, uh, you know, drop chaff. There's a bunch of different ones, op, you know, control options. None of that stuff matters. See, so, like, here we go. They're, they're all right here. That doesn't matter, because as soon as you press the button, no matter what it is, it's going to run whatever ECM program you have saved in your data cartridge. So no matter what, if it's drop chaff or drop, you know, uh, flare, whatever button you select doesn't matter. Just select one of them and put it on your stick. And finally, I have a, another button on my joystick, which I have no function assigned to. 
and I use that to actually transmit on TeamSpeak. So if you're not going to be playing multiplayer, you don't need to do that, obviously. But since I only, I pretty much exclusively only play multiplayer, I have a button on my stick to do that. Um, some other buttons that you're going to need to know, although you're not going to need them on your stick, is uh, G, and that's for landing gear, raising and lowering the landing gear. Another one is um, Enter, which is cycle air-to-air -air hard points. That will basically cycle between your air-to-air -air weapons. And uh, Backspace, which is cycle air-to-ground hard points. And that will cycle between air-to-ground weapons. There's some other buttons that you might need to know, but those are like the main ones. I'm going to post up an image that I'm going to put into this video. I'm just going to list all the buttons, and I'm also going to put them in the video description. This way you guys have a, a reference of all the buttons that you should know, or at least have bounds. Um, that's basically it. I mean, there's not that many buttons on the F-16. It's very easy to fly, and unlike, you know, something like the A-10, which has a bunch of different hats and all sorts of crap, you don't really need to do that on the uh, F-16. Now, another key concept here is that you need to set an afterburner threshold for your throttle, okay? So, right now I'm moving my throttle. You can see it moving right here. Now, the afterburner threshold is the point on your throttle at which, if you go over it, it will roll into your afterburner and start opening the nozzle position, okay? So what I like to do is I like to put my nozzle, I like to put my uh, afterburner threshold about 75% up on my throttle. And if I go beyond that, then I go into afterburner. So all you gotta do is you just move this slider using a throttle to wherever you want the, uh, wherever you want the afterburner to start, and then you just click set AB, okay? And then it's good to go. Now, another thing that you need to do before you exit the screen is, and this is a mistake that a lot of newbies make, and then they come back here and they're like, why didn't my settings save? You need to click save, okay? And it doesn't matter what you name it, just click save, okay? And then click apply. If you don't do that, your settings aren't gonna save, and you're going to be very unhappy when you're going to have to remap everything. Now, uh, another thing is we're going to go into the advanced settings here. Now, a lot of people that have uh, a joystick with multiple hats or multiple throttles, they often complain that the game is not detecting their buttons or not detecting their throttles. And that's because you need to come into here and you need to select whatever portion of the whatever aspect of the game you want those axes to do and you need to select them from this drop down menu okay from these various drop down menus i don't have to deal with this because i have a logitech extreme 3d pro it's a pretty cheap and basic stick i only have one hat and one throttle but i know a lot of you guys are rolling with x52s and thrustmaster cougars and warthogs and shit like that that's fine just come in here and you will be able to assign whatever axes are on your stick. It's not like the game doesn't support them. They do. Okay. Now, um, another thing that I'm going to bring up here is a lot of people that have track IR, they always ask me, how do you have six degrees of freedom? How do you zoom in your head and things like that on the videos? Okay. All you need to do is make sure that these are checked. Okay. You need to enable the track IR vector and the vector z-axis mode is uh, field of view control. If you have that set, then you're good to go, and you'll have full six degrees of freedom. Um, that's pretty much all I want to go over in this screen. I mean, you can experiment with this stuff, but those are the two main things that I often hear come up, is people are just, you know, they're, why isn't my track IR working like yours is? And why aren't my axes, my hats, and my, you know, throttles not working? And that's because you need to go to the advanced options screen. It's all pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to go over it. Um, what I will uh, go over, though, is the, uh, let's see here. Well, that's pretty much it, actually. 
and what I found is that um, unless I like for instance this is if you guys wanted to set cursor X and cursor Y or the range knob any of this stuff on your stick if you just clicked on here and changed it from keyboard it would have whatever axis is on your stick so that's pretty self-explanatory um, and then just make sure you save again make sure you apply the settings so that's the basics of the controls now we're gonna go to the data cartridge next thing we're gonna go over is the data cartridge okay so in order to access the data cartridge controls you have to either be in a tactical engagement or you have to be in the campaign so we're gonna go uh, why not tactical engagement I'll load the ILS video or an ILS scenario that I used for the previous tutorial okay so how do you access your data cartridge it's this button down here okay it's down here in the bottom right it's this gray little box that's vomiting out another box go and click on that and now we have the data cartridge screen so what does the data cartridge do okay number one is that it will save target steer points so if you designate steer points on the 2d screen on the briefing screen then they will save your data cartridge and that's how your f16 is able to recall them later okay what it also does is it sets um it's actually a program for your electronic warfare suite and if you don't have programs enabled in your data cartridge then when you press the chaff flare button nothing will happen literally so it's pretty much a death sentence not to fly with a data cartridge and it's pretty much impossible to fly. Another thing it does is, is that it sets the default loadout and physical settings of your aircraft. So it sets what MFDs you're gonna have selected, um, the various MFDs that appear for master modes, and stuff like that. By default, uh, you know, you're just gonna get blank MFDs. So you're gonna set your default MFD loadouts in this uh, screen and the last thing it does is that it sets the default comm frequencies that your aircraft is going to be tuned to and most importantly is that it tunes and saves the default uh, frequencies for the tower so if you get in game and you can't talk to the tower that's because you didn't set up your data cartridge okay so we're just going to go through this one by one now as far as the targets area of the data cartridge is concerned um, this you can't really set this up the way that it's the way that target steer points are added is by reconning something and um, selecting you know selecting a component and then designating it as a target steer point and then uh, it's automatically saved to your data cartridge so I just quickly reconned the random airbase. I selected a stri strip of the runway as target steer one, and then I also did it for target steer 10. Now, when you designate a steer, a target steer, it overrides whatever is in your flight plan. So if you have, um, you know, 10 steer points in your flight plan, you're not gonna wanna use any steer points below 11 for target steers. And um, I have another more in-depth video. It's actually in the harm tutorial that tells you guys like, in depth how to use target steer points so if you want to know more about that just go there but um, that's the bottom line for target steers now the uh, the EWS screen of the data cartridge this is setting up your programs okay so you have four programs that you can access easily at least there's actually six but we're not going to talk about five and six because it's a pain in the ass to activate them so you have four programs that you're going to be using on a regular basis. Now, this box here selects the program that you have selected. And let me just go over and just define what a program is, okay? So, a program is basically a, a, a pre-planned, pre-programmed series of ECM actions that happen when you press the the chaff pickle button okay so one program might have five flares and two chaff come out another program might have ten flares and five chaff come out one might have one flare and that's it you know it's all customizable and you need to set this before you fly okay now this box right here as I said that selects the program 
and this box here, this selects the type of countermeasure that you're using in the program. So in my in my program one, I only have it releasing chaff. Okay, so that's why if we go to I have chaff selected right now, we can see burst quantity is three and sequence quantity is three. Now, if I go to flare, everything's zero, and that's because I have no flares on program one. What I typically have in my programs, I have program one, which is just against long range missiles and SAMs, and I use chaff for that. I have program two, which is for only low altitude attacks, and it only shoots out flares, and a little bit of chaff. Then I have uh, program three, which is like an all purpose program that I use when I'm flying around, and it's basically a reaction to ambush program. It shoots out chaff and flare in about equal quantities. And program four is what I like to call the attack program. And program four, you could just press once on the ingress to a target, and it basically lasts for like a minute and a half. So it lets you just press your chaff and flare button once and then just roll in, um, not have to worry about your countermeasures, and it will just slowly release flare and chaff the entire time. Now, that being said, let's go over how to actually make some programs. Okay. Now, there's two there's two concepts here. There's sequence and burst. Okay. A sequence is a sequence contains a number of bursts. Okay. And a burst is simply a release of either chaff or flare. So let's say you have one sequence with a burst quantity of three. That means that you're gonna, when you press your chaff and flare button, it's going to release three of whatever it is. If you had two sequences and you had three burst quantity, then it's gonna release two sequences of three. So six in total. And so on. And that's the basic concept beyond sequence and burst. Now, there's also an interval in between both sequence and burst. So let's say we had two sequences with a sequence interval of two, okay? That means that when I press the pickle button, it's gonna use the, it's gonna go on the first sequence, then it's gonna wait two seconds, then it's gonna do the second sequence. So in this example, I have a, a sequence quantity of three, and I have a sequence interval of two, which means as soon as I press that button, it's gonna do the first sequence, then it's gonna wait two seconds, it's gonna do the second sequence, then it's gonna wait another two seconds and do the third sequence. Okay, there's also another concept and that's burst interval. And that is the in, that is the spacing between individual releases of chaff or flare. So burst quantity three and burst interval 0.75. That means when a sequence goes, it's gonna fire a chaff, it's gonna wait 0.75 seconds, it's gonna fire another chaff, then it's gonna wait another 0.75 seconds, and it's gonna fire the third chaff. So the basic concept here is sequence is how many times the program will run, so to speak. The burst quantity is how much chaff or flare are gonna be released every time it runs. Okay. And uh, we can see, I'm just gonna select my second program here. So in the second program, I have um, this is this is like I said, this is my low altitude attack program. This is when I'm doing like ground attack. I have a sequence quantity of three and a burst quantity of one. So every every pro time it's going to release, it's going to release one chaff, okay? And it's going to do so every three seconds because I have a sequence interval of three. So it's gonna release one chaff, it's gonna wait three seconds, it's gonna release another chaff, it's gonna wait three seconds, it's gonna release uh, another um, chaff, okay? And we can also see on the, f I have a lot more flares though. I have two sequences that are spaced only a second apart and they release four flares. So eight flares in total every time I pickle. So if I am going in on a target, I wanna bomb with, you know, I wanna drop some bombs on it. I press, when I'm just about to go into the threat envelope, I press the, the countermeasures button, 
I got four flares out immediately, and then one second later, another flares pop. And they're, each time the flares are going, they're separated by half of a second. As we can see here, the burst interval is 0.5. So every time you know the sequence comes up, it does one, two, three, four. Second pause, and then one, two, three, four. Now that hopefully you guys understand that. Now some other there's some other features on this um, tab that are like basic features that affect all your electronic warfare stuff. Okay, you need to now if you don't have a bingo enabled. All right, so what the bingo will do is it will tell you it will say low. You know when you're actually going through your countermeasures, the bitching Betty, you know your computer will say low. And that's to indicate to you that your chaff, and, your chaff or flare supply is getting low, okay? And the the number of chaff or flare that it starts to warn you at is uh, these numbers here, where it says chaff bingo and flare bingo, okay? So you can set how many, what the number is of, you know, uh, when you want the computer to alert you. And it doesn't even have to alert you. You can just turn off the bingo if you want. These other two boxes, make sure you have them enabled. And this just basically ensures that Bitching Betty will properly will properly um, communicate to you when you're uh, popping Chef and Flare. And leave uh, Rec Jam off. That will, I believe that turns on your jammer when you press a program, which is a horrible, um, a horrible idea. So that's the EWS. Um, panel. Now the next thing we're going to go over is modes, okay? And this is the default layouts of your MFDs, okay? And what it has is all the different master modes here, and every different master mode can have a different MFD setup. Now what I use is I use the same MFD setup regardless of what uh, master mode I'm on. So in modes, I have, this, I have air to ground master mode selected. This is the first uh, box here that selects the mode. And I have MFD 1 and 2, okay? Now, you can select four MFDs, but the F-16 only has two MFDs. So, 1 and 2 are the only ones that you're going to be running into on the F-16. The other two MFDs are probably for other aircraft that use more than two MFDs that they're slowly putting into BMS. As of now, don't even worry about that. Just focus on MFD 1 and 2, okay? Now, I what I have is I have a realistic setup for my MFDs. You don't have to do this, but what I like to have is on my so if I'm in air to ground master mode on my first MFD, which is the left one, I like to have the FCR. Okay, uh, I like to have the FCR and then the data cartridge and then the test screens. All you know, like this is this is what's going to show up at the bottom of your MFD. You know, like the different categories under at the bottom of your MFD, this is what's going to show up by default. And then what page of your MFD is going to be selected by default is um, determined by this box here, this fourth box where it says current, okay? So it just uh, you, can, you can select either primary, secondary, or tertiary. I have it set to primary. So when I switch into air to ground master mode, the the default page that's going to be selected on my MFD is going to be the FCR because I have the current, I have primary selected for current and under primary I have FC, FCR. Now if I change this to my weapon page or whatever, then if I switch to air to ground master mode, it's going to be, it's going to have the weapon page selected by default, okay? And there's a whole bunch of different options here, you can do whatever you want. Now, um, and also for the second MFD, I have, you know, the weapon page is the first thing, the S the HSD is the second thing, and then the SMS is the third thing. And by default, I have um, the SMS page selected. So when I switch into air to ground master mode, you know, I already showed you what's on the left MFD, but what's on the right MFD is weapon, HSD, and SMS. And it has the SMS, the stores management, selected by default. As I, you can see here where it says current is tertiary and um, under tertiary we have the SMS. Okay, And I have the exact same thing for air-to-air -air master mode. Now you can change this you know, at your will. You don't have to do this. And 
all just for me I like to fly realistically I, I pretty much have the same stuff for every um, mode another really useful feature of this page is display bullseye and you're definitely gonna want to check that and if you have that checked then on your MFDs it's gonna it's gonna well it's gonna put it in two places okay by checking this box it's the same thing as going uh, list 080 on your ICP it's gonna select your current bullseye in the bottom left of your HUD and it's also going to select, it's also going to include uh, your bullseye at the bottom left of your NFDs. So, I always have that on. It's always, you know, if someone asks you for your bullseye, you can quickly just look at the bottom left of your HUD or at your MFDs and read off your bullseye. It's really crucial for situational awareness. Finally, we have the comms. We have the comms section of the data cartridge, okay? And what this does is it selects default frequencies and default currently selected uh, frequencies for your radio system. So in the uh, F-16, you have two bands. You have the uniform band and you have the victor band, okay? So you select the band here. The uniform is like a, you know, really long-range radio. It's the most powerful radio. And you usually have the tower comms on there, or you have the guard channel on there, or talking to like a fac or whatever. You use the uniform band, okay? And um, pretty much what, okay, so this box selects the bands, and this area selects what, what, uh, what uh, ch radio channel you're gonna have selected. So, if we slew along here, we can at any point we can just um, we can select default, and then it will make this channel, this channel preset, the default channel that you're going to start your game with. So, if I have preset four and I click default, then when I start the game, I'm going to be on uniform four. I'm going to be on channel four um, when I start the game. Now, what I would recommend setting your default to. Uh, on the uniform is I'd select channel 15 and the reason why we're doing that is because channel 1 to 14 are presets that already exist within BMS like uh, channel 6 is the package comms channel 14 is the guard channel channel 1 is AWACS you know stuff like that so there's a bunch of preset channels that already exist so you're, you're gonna want to go to the first unclaimed preset which is channel 15 you're gonna want to make that default and then click uh, set tower and then it's going to set whatever airbase you're currently operating out of. It's going to display that name here. And then it's going to tune you to that frequency on channel 15. So when you get in game, you'll be on comm to the tower. Okay. And what I like to have for the Victor band is I like to have uh, the package comms by default. So I have channel 6, which is package comms. I have that by default. Okay, and I'm gonna be um, attaching an image to this video that will show you all the default pack, uh, all the default radio channels and what they are for your own reference. I'm also gonna be putting that into the video description. But the bottom line is the thing that you need to realize is that channels one through fourteen are radio channels that are preset. They already are being used by all the aircraft in the theater, and they're sort of standard. So you don't want to overwrite them. You want to that's why, for instance, I would never select preset six, and I would never make this the tower because that's going to overwrite the package comms, and I won't have them. So frequency one three three dot one five zero is the package. That's like everyone, all the flights that are in the package are on that net. Okay. If I were to make this package comm, then I would no longer be able to switch to my package comms unless I wrote down this frequency and set it to another channel. So hopefully that makes sense. Um. So when you're done messing around with your data cartridge, you just click save, and um, it will say saved okay. Now every time you fly, it, this thing will load automatically, and you'll be good to go. You won't have to deal with uh, towers that you can't hear, you won't have to deal with, um, 
you know, blank MFDs, you don't want to have to deal with not having ECM programs. Now, one thing you do need to know is that the data cartridge is not persistent in the following ways, okay? It does not save target steer points. So, if I set up target steer points right now, which I did, and then I back out and I come back in, they're not going to be set anymore. Or, uh, actually, it will, it will remain persistent as long as the game is on, but if you, if you close the game and you come back in, they'll be gone. So, unlike the other parts of your data cartridge, which are, which are persistent, and they'll be there forever until you change them, okay? So make sure that um, if you set targets to your point and your game crashes or whatever, or you have to exit out, make sure you come back and reset them before you fly, otherwise you'll be in for a surprise. Another thing that it doesn't save is it doesn't um, save pre-planned threat steer points. So it won't save like, you know, this uh, SA-10 circle for instance. It's not going to save that um, if your game resets. So you'll have to, you'll have to re-add that when you get in. And it also does not save um, steer point lines, so if you want to make like a battle box or whatever, engagement area, you're using the uh, steer point lines, it's not going to save this. So make sure you do that, you reset that when you get back in game. So uh, that's the basics of the data cartridge and the controls. If you have any comments, uh, please, uh, please provide them in the comments area below and uh, let me know any feedback or any ideas that you have. Thank you. Oh, uh, one thing I did forget to mention is that I am going to be including my data cartridge for download. So if you're too lazy to set up a data cartridge or if you don't want to go through the hassle, you can download my data cartridge and then uh, use it as your own. So I'm going to be putting a link to download that in the video description as well as um, instructions on how to install it. So enjoy.